Now, at a rehearsal, will you just run through the music, or will you stop and talk to the orchestra? Oh, we uh, well, talk is a, a big word, but I will do it sometimes again, and sometimes I will say something, and um, you know, if, if things are going very well, um, I will I won't stop. But I know already that we have to repeat some things, which is normal on the rehearsal, um, and then. You know, you just you just enjoy that. You will see it. And of course, it is a working rehearsal, and we know that every one of you will be as quiet as a mouse while the orchestra is rehearsing. Yap, these are students, I would say, what, 16, 17, most of you? I'm curious, where were you in your music education when you were 16 or 17? Um, it was just mentioned by Jamie already. Uh, when I was 16, I won a competition in the Netherlands. Um, and that gave me the opportunity to, uh, to go to the Juilliard School. I entered that school and got a scholarship. Um, and I studied there for, let me see, uh, three years. From my 16th till my 19th birthday. And then... Um, after that, I immediately became the leader of the uh, Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra. So uh, at my 16th, 17th birthday, I all, uh, I all had that in New York, actually, at the Juilliard School. So that was a very interesting time. In the beginning, I was, uh, I can say, I was very alone. Uh, I, did not knew, I did not know anybody at that time there. Um, but, you know, that, that's how Juilliard is. If you win a competition at that school, then suddenly everybody's asking, hey, what's your name? Uh, and so from that time on, I started to develop some relationships there. But um, it was a tough time, yes. As a student at Juilliard, of course, you were a great violinist. How many hours a day did you practice? Um, whole day. Yes. I mean, uh, I would come in at Juilliard at uh, 9 o'clock, 9.30 in the morning, and I would leave uh, nine 9 o'clock in the evening. Of course, you had some breaks, but normally, you know, you were uh, studying your violin, I would say, 85% of the time, and then you had your theory classes. Um, so, that you know, that was an, an, a, every day, I would say, 10, 11, 12 hours at, at school. When you, were, when you were a child, did your parents make you practice or were you self-motivated? Did you do it yourself? <laughs> um, I, you know, it, that is always an, uh, an interesting question because um, I know that I really wanted to play that violin. But during that beginning, that I would say the first, second year, there were moments, there were moments that I thought, I wish I could quit. Um, and if you see my first violin, actually, uh, where, you, where, you, uh, where you have the, the violin under your, your chin, um, there are still a lot of marks of some tears. I was six, seven years old. Uh, there are some, still some marks of tears in, um, you know, in the violin. And um, so that always reminds me on, on, on uh, how great it was to, to study music, but also that it was sometimes hard. To, to keep up um, and not go out and, uh, and play ball with my friends. Because my father was, he said, if you choose to do this, you gotta take it really seriously, otherwise stop immediately. So he, you know, he was, in, on one hand, he, was, he, he let me choose myself, but then he made me reali realize that it was very important that if you make that decision, that it will not be always easy. And that, that's, you know, this is what it is. How important in your education and to musicians in general is the study of the, the mathematics and the science of music, of, of music theory? Oh, I think it's very important because it is, it is the foundation, uh, in, in my belief, it's the foundation of, of uh, you know, of making music. It is extremely important that, um, you know, uh, that you know where music is about, how it is put together by the composer, and um, uh, that you understand um, the, the direction 
of, of chords, for instance, and the direction of how a composer sees the, the, uh, the piece. Um, and then, of course, after that understanding, you can, you can, f you can realize uh, much better if a piece is a really a good piece or not a good piece. And of course, that's individual for everybody. It's always different, but um, it makes you m uh, much more rich in knowing music. And if you become a professional musician or composer, it'll help you. And if you don't, it'll still help you because we need educated listeners. Yes. yes. What questions do you have? Jamie, I think, has a microphone. What questions do you have for Mr. Van Sveten? What made you sure that music is the right thing for you? Um, well, <clears throat> if music uh, touches your heart directly from the first note, you hear a symphony or a, a piece by piano or a guitar or somebody singing, and it touches you, then you know that you made the right choice. If you have to conquer that feeling, you will um, not make that decision so easily. If it really hits you right in your heart, then immediately I knew, because I can only talk for myself, I knew that this was the thing I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Thank you. How would you describe your experience with the Dallas Orchestra? Um, as, an, um, as a dream, um, the orchestra is, an, uh, is a phenomenal orchestra. And um, I can see that um, every day, again, our marriage, uh, if you may say so, is, uh, is, is an, an, uh, a blessed one for us. And we are very happy to have this journey together. We just extended our contract. Um, and we, we have big plans. And we are extremely happy at the moment. So we hope that it will stay like that. Uh, did you ever think about switching to a different instrument as opposed to uh, just quitting altogether when you were younger? Um, no. I, when I made a decision to play the violin, um, I was really um, sure that I would stay with that instrument, although I had these little marks in my violin. Um, I, I love that instrument, and you know, when I look back, um, I would say, for me, the, the most beautiful instrument is uh, the human voice. And for me, um, the, the violin is the most close instrument to that voice. Uh, now, I have a very bad voice. If I sing something for the orchestra, usually they laugh, and they are right. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but um, the, so the violin was, was my choice, and, and I, I, you know, I was blessed to play that instrument for many years. What do you enjoy doing the most, conducting or performing the violin? Conducting and performing is, of course, the same thing. Uh, but uh, is, is, is your question maybe rehearsing and, and conduct, uh, rehearsing? Playing the fiddle. Oh, playing the fiddle. What was, what was your question again? Do you enjoy conducting the orchestra more than performing on your own instrument? Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. No, you see, as as playing an uh, playing an instrument, you just play one line, and uh, as a violinist, and I felt, you know, at the end of my violin playing career, so to say, I felt like uh, a big, big, big bird in a very little cage. I I needed to get out, and then when I started to conduct. Uh, 
I realized that this was the thing I, I, I should have done 10 years earlier, but that's okay. Uh, but so conducting is, is the, the ultimate experience to make music, in my opinion.